You're listening to the Go Getter Podcast. I'm your host, Candice Janae. I'm a digital marketing and automation strategist and business coach. I'm the CEO and founder of Epic Fab Girl, where we help Christian women entrepreneurs market and scale their service-based businesses beyond six figures as they grow deeper in their faith. So whether you're a coach, speaker, or a service provider, this podcast will drop gems, bringing you tips, strategies, and stories from experts to help you take your life, business, and relationship with God to the next level. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Go-Getter Podcast. I am your host, Candice Janae, and I am so excited to be back with another episode of the Go-Getter Podcast. And literally, I am excited about today's episode because we get to interview an another incredible entrepreneur. And y'all know I love hearing the stories of women entrepreneurs, especially women of faith who are going after business and doing it God's way. So I am so excited about today. And every episode, I'm pretty sure that I'm always like, yeah, like you guys are in for a treat, but I really do believe y'all are in for a treat today. Like, I just love hearing the stories of women um, because it's so relatable, right? Like, I love hearing the stories of everyday women that, you know, have made that decision to bet on themselves and bet on God and go after business, even when it gets tough. One of the things that I recently said on Threads was just shout out to all the entrepreneurs that are still standing, right? Through the ups, through the downs, through the good, through the bad, through figuring it out, figuring out not just business, but like when life be life and we still are standing and still haven't given up. So shout out to you if you still haven't given up. And that's why I love to hear the stories of women because we know that life be life and we know that things happen and it's so important to just go after what God told us to go after regardless. And so today's episode is so incredible. And I'm saying this before we even record because I know it's going to be so good, but this is one of our longstanding clients, right? Like I'm really excited about this episode because um, our client has not only, I think she has been at probably, she was at the first ever retreat that I hosted back in 2019. She was at the first ever conference I hosted for Go Getter Conference back in 2018. So it has been beautiful to see her grow and expand and evolve into everything that God has had for her over the past, what, eight, nine years. So it has been so crazy and beautiful um, to just see her journey. And so I'm going to share with you guys um, a little bit more about her. So Alexis Hudson is a licensed nail tech beauty biz mentor and founder of Press Steens, which is a press on nail company. And she owns a micro nail salon that has grown globally. She combines almost a decade of industry experience with a passion for faith, personal development, and philanthropy, leading the Polish and Proverbs community. Y'all, you know we love to see it when the girls incorporate faith into business, but I just want to welcome you to the Go-Getter Podcast. Hey, Alexis, we are so excited to have you here with us today. Hey, Candice, thank you so much for having me. This is such an honor, such a pleasure. So thank you. (laughs) Yes, of course. Like, you know I'm excited because you have spent time and space with me in intimate environments like at our retreats, um, but also have seen... Um, the work that we do. And you've been a part of like our programs and different things like that over the years. And one thing I'm really grateful for, I know you're like, oh, I'm honored, but I'm just honored that you've been such a loyal customer and client over the years. And I'm honored to see the way that your business has grown. So I'm just so excited for this conversation. And I already know, like I did in the intro, I'm like, I know this conversation is going to be good. But For anybody who is new to you, new to what you do, I know I read your bio, but I would just love for you to share a little bit more about yourself and your business and really kind of how you got started doing what you're doing. Yeah. So, okay. My name's Alexis, but I also go by Lex in the beauty industry. And I wanted to do nails since I was a little girl. Like I'm talking about, I was 15 years old working at a nail salon. That was my very first job. And from there, I I got let go because y'all know 
the beauty industry, when recession started hitting, yeah, y'all tend to cut the budgets on the beauty services, which was okay. It was okay. That led me to go to McDonald's. And from there, I would spend my paycheck getting my nails done because I still just loved the environment. Fast forward, I went to college. I started doing nails in my dorm, graduated, got my first big girl job. And I got there and I didn't like those people and they didn't really like me either. So I enrolled in nail school. And a few months later, I, I was let go. So I was able to go ahead and complete the program. I got my nail license and it's been up since that was 2016 that I started my my nail business. And, you know, since then, been quite a few things. We've survived a pandemic. I've had a whole child. So just transition after transition. But here we are. <laughs> I love that so much. I love the stories of like, when we think we going to school for one thing and God is like, yeah, that was cute. <laughs> Let's take you down another path, right? And to go from like doing dorm room nails, right? Like nails in your dorm room to now have a business that has international presence. Like that's just such a big deal. I would love to know like what that looks like for you to make that transition. I know you got let go from your job and, you know, you had already gotten the the license to do nails, but like, what did that journey look like actually following God and like, you know, going after what was maybe not the norm for you or other people that you knew? Yeah. So what I will say is when I first started my business, I was very much lukewarm. I was in the church and in the world. It was, it was one foot in each, but I still, I, I love reading the Bible. I love reading the word of God. So I would soak up that and still do what I wanted to do, right? So (laughs) part of how I kind of grew to this place is I just learned business principles. I just studied business. I would go to different conferences like your conference. I would um, sit under different mentors and stuff like that. And everyone encouraged me, go crazy on your nail services. Offer this, offer that, start offering products, which is how I got into press-ons and different other nail care products. But the conflict came when God arrested me at a conference. I was literally at a conference when I had to rededicate my life back to God. And from there, it was just things started falling. Right. So I offered nail care services at the time, but I was also offering I was also offering like Yoni steams and reflexology, just all these different things trying to create like a spa like environment. And God had to tell me, like, what I put in your hands is enough. Like what you can do at the nail table is enough. So from there, um, I just kind of sat still. I sat still for a minute. And from there, started focusing on what it looked like to really market my nail services and market my, my products. Again, going back to the pandemic, that good old pandemic was the reset that I needed because I really got to sit down and spend some time with God. And from there, he kind of walked me through what now the nail education that I, I'm now offering and just different ways that I can reach people beyond just servicing them at the nail table. So good. I feel like there that was packed with so much, but I want to lean into the part where you said, what I put into your hands is enough. And one of the things I think a lot of entrepreneurs make the mistake of doing is that they try to do everything. They try to be everything to everybody. And they end up, you know, in this space where they're not completely focused on the thing that God told them to focus on. And then before they know it, things start crumbling and then they're wondering why. And it's because you lack focus. And it's, and one of the reasons why I think a lot of people struggle with that focus thing is exactly what you said is because they're not honoring what God gave them. They're not seeing that what God gave them in their hands was more than enough, right? So you transition from the job to having your own nail service um, and doing nails. So my question is, did you go immediately into like your own shop or like, did you go into someone else's shop? And then like, you know, I know at now you have your own kind of brick and mortar, but talk to us about the transition from like, when you left your job and, and started doing nails on your own, what that looked like in what, whether you were serving other people under their businesses. Um, and then also that journey of like 
you having your salon and, and what that looks like now? Yeah. So what I will say is I got started professionally in the nail industry in 2016 and it looked way different than it looks right now. No knock to anybody else. But back then we respected the fact that you go to nail school, you get your license, like you do things according to state board. And that's exactly what I did. When I got let go from my job, I was only taking classes part time to get the nail license. So from there, I went full time. The day after I finished, my instructor looked at me and she said, you can go kill it. She was like, you got your state board schedule. Just go ahead, do whatever. So from there, I started seeing clients in my living room. I was (laughs) at my house seeing clients in my living room. I had a small dog at the time. He hated it. But we had those people in and out of there. They were getting their manicures, getting their pedicures, and they were happy despite the space. But then I got uncomfortable because I was growing just a little fast. Um, So I transitioned into a barbershop, which was a different type of environment. But I had a client pull me to the side. I was basically like, this doesn't match where I see you going. This doesn't match the t- the type of people that I see you serving. So I left there, went to two different hair salons before going to a nail salon. At that nail salon is when I had that moment of like, okay, God is like, you cannot continue to do things the way that you have been doing things. I need you to do things in line with who I have called and created you to be. That means standing on your own two feet, go ahead and get a suite. I had to move. So that I got my first salon suite in 2019. Was that 2019? It was 2018 or 2019. I'm blanking on uh, the year right now. But from there, yeah, just doing my best to show up online, ask for referrals, just everything to kind of make sure I could stay afloat and keep the doors open. And it's really been the same since. God will like give me an idea of like, okay, go ahead and make this this quick little ebook. Three ways to make your nails last between appointments, different stuff like that. It goes a long way in in the ways that it has helped me. So, so good. I it's I think about the level of faith required to step out into your own brick and mortar. Anything. Um, I think in this day and age, you know, coaches like myself <laughs> and you know other people that you know have businesses that maybe agencies or things like that where they can work completely remote and don't need a physical space, like we kind of overlook the luxury that we don't have that much overhead, right? Like, or we may not have that much physical overhead because we got overhead job, but uh, we may not have, you know, certain types of overhead of having to keep up a brick and mortar. And for those of you guys that are listening where you're like, wait, brick and mortar, brick and mortar basically means that you just have a business that is in person, a physical business, like you know, the post office, you walk in, it's a physical business, you know, a nail shop, you have to walk in, it's a physical business, right? And so what was, what were like your thoughts in your mind, like going into like doing your own thing? And like, what were some of the fears that were popping up when you're like, okay, I'm going from being in somebody else's space to also like, now I have to make this commitment to actually be in this space on my own. And like, what were some of the things you were not just afraid of, but like, what were you considering to figure out if this was like a good business decision at the time? Yeah. So for me, the the main, the first thing that scared me was just the difference in the investment, right? When you're working for someone else, it's just like, oh, just show up and pay your rent every week. Whereas I walked into my first salon suite, it was nothing but four white walls. I had to get my nail table, my pedicure chair. Now you're talking about rent every month. So the first thing I had to do was really like sit down and count the costs, which I think, you know, it's important for anyone in any type of brick and mortar, like count the cost. Like what would it actually take? How would I have to show up? And then also, I, I'm just going to be honest, I didn't have a whole lot in my savings, which back in those times, like I could hustle. I was working like five, six, sometimes seven days a week because I'm just like, okay, if I get as many people in here as possible, I know I won't have to worry about paying these bills. Not the smartest thing to do. Definitely don't advise that these days, but that's what I did in counting the cost. I'm like, okay, if let's say my pedicure is $50, I need to do X amount of pedicures this week was kind of my mindset. But that's where the fear also kicked in because it's like, well, dang, how do I get X amount of people in here? And then they get this service once a month, like, how do I make sure they come back? So 
it was just that. But I, I had to have faith throughout it all. I, I can't discredit the faith that I had. And even my clients, my clients and my customers, they wanted to see me be successful. So they would refer. They would shout me out on social media. They would show behind the scenes of their appointments. They made it appealing, which was helpful in bringing others in as well. Good. This is so good because you keep bringing up something that I think is so important in business. And I definitely want to get a little bit more into this later with like talking about keeping a consistent client base. But one of the things that you've brought up consistently is like referrals. And one of the things I always tell people when it comes to like, they're like, oh, if I if I don't have, you know, clients or if I need to make more money, I'm like, if you don't ask these people for referrals, like that is one of the easiest ways. Right. Like we refer people to our favorite drink at our favorite coffee shop. Right. Like we refer people to, you know, like I know when people be like, oh, girl, your hair is cute. I'll be like, oh, yeah, let me tell you where I got it done. Like I'm very quick and easy. Like it's an easy referral when people are like, oh, girl, I love your hair. It's nothing for me to be able to say, OK, and I'm a nail girly. So like I love keeping my nails done. So when people are like, oh, where'd you get your nails done? It don't take much for me to tell them where I got my nails done from. So what I'm wondering is, I know it sounds like referrals are helping your business stay afloat, but what are some th- some of the things that you do to get referrals? Like if you know you're like, okay, I need some more referrals or more clients. Are you asking your clients anything in particular? And did you ever get to a point where you're like, wait, let me ask them to tag me or be more intentional about asking for them to be more vocal? Yeah. So initially I kind of stumbled upon them referring, but as I had to think backwards and kind of figure out how do I get them to continue to refer in, it's number one, just asking. But before you ask, you have to make sure you treat people well, because the same way you were saying like, oh, well, I'll, if someone asks, I'll tell them somebody might ask about your services. And if they didn't have a good experience, that's going to travel even further, faster than if you actually treated them well. No matter, and don't get me wrong, nails are definitely about the result, but the way people are treated when they are in this space matters just as much as what they walk away with because that's what makes them want to come back. So definitely asking. Um, and even now, okay, so we're just in a weird, we're in an interesting time in the beauty industry. It's a real interesting time. And I'm just having honest conversations with my clients like, hey, y'all. Can you talk to the people that are like you? I want more people like you in here. Don't be stingy. That's another thing. Um, Also, one of the things that came up on the client's end is that, well, if I refer all these people, how am I going to get my appointment? Don't worry about that. I will make sure since you've been taking care of me that I will take care of you. So having those like just honest conversations to just at the end of the day, ask like, can you send more people that are like you? I really enjoy servicing you. I want to be able to do this long term. But if my business does not grow, then everything's going to have to shut down. So just saying it plainly and incentives different. If you send a friend and they come this month, I'll give you like $10 off your next appointment. They're just little things here and there. Oh, I have uh, gifts that I give out different times of the year. So just that like giving them something to look forward to simply by them saying something nice about you and, and can definitely add like signage. I used to have signs in here. That's like drop a nail fee, go ahead and tag Prestings, um, after your appointment, we'll hook you up with some complimentary nail art for your next point. Just different things like that is kind of how I have made it work for me. I love it. And have you ever had to, um, like raise your prices and, How did you go about doing that? Because I know, listen, that's one of the number one things people be like, man, I'm so scared that if I raise my prices, my clients are going to leave me. So like, tell us about, you know, raising your prices and how did you like approach that with your clients? Um, And like, what were some of the feelings and stuff that you personally had like in raising your prices? So I do, I raise my prices every now and again, every now and again, even if it's just a couple dollars, they have to go up because. So, so not, just so that I, just so I know you raise your prices when you want to raise your prices, whenever you want to raise your prices. If you feel like raising your prices, you raising your prices. Waste Absolutely. But there's also a method to the madness. There's a method yes. to the madness because, okay. And I'm just going to tell y'all because we here, right? 
when it comes to the beauty industry, there are certain times of the year that people are not going without getting their services. So if you raise your prices in October or November, it's, it'll be just fine. Nobody's going to run away because they need their nails done for the holidays. If you raise your prices, let's say like April, May, you'll be fine because people need their toes done. They need their braids done for their vacations. You'll be okay. So that's kind of how, um, yeah, I learned, I learned that early. Like when I first entered the beauty industry, it's like, you go to these trade shows, you continue your education, you're investing in yourself. Why would you not want to see your return on investment? How else would you see it other than raising your prices? offering different things that can even take you to different tiers and different tickets. So yeah, definitely don't be afraid. You do run a risk. You may lose some people, but again, like I think about it like, well, those, they might not be my people or it might not be our season to work with one another and just be okay with that. But raising prices, non-negotiable. It has to happen because everything else is going up. Listen, everything else is going up. And I know like just hearing you talk about all of this is, First of all, getting me excited because I know that you've made a recent pivot or not complete pivot, but you have launched out to do something new. Right. And I'm like, you sound like you have got this down to a T when it comes to the beauty industry with, you know, nails and and things like that. And and you're so right. One of the things that you said earlier was like, if you don't treat people right, like that news will also travel far. Um, I recently asked for a makeup artist for an event and I asked multiple people for several different referrals, but, um, there were a couple people that, you know, I thought had done a really, really great job when I looked on their socials and stuff. But one of the things that I always ask, because I'm a very timely person, I don't like, especially if I'm getting my makeup done for an important day. Like the last thing I want is you to have to rush on my face. And for you to be running late and like I, you know, it pushes me back for something. So one of the things that happened was there was this one person that was really, really great at what they did. But everybody I had asked about, they were like, oh, she's great, but she'd be running a little bit late. So what was interesting was I was grateful that I had that perspective from everybody because I might not have booked her, but I did end up booking her and she did a great job but I at least had the right and proper perspective. But if they said something like really crazy, like, oh, she real unprofessional or she had me two hours late to something, I probably would have been like, yeah, no, like I'm not going to do this. Right. And so I think all of that stuff carries far. And even like the client experience with giving them gifts and things like that, that's a huge thing. That's something that businesses can always do to, you know, increase like loyalty with their customers. If you've learned anything from this podcast, I know you're going to love the Go-Getter Confidential Click at gogettermembership.com. It's a global membership community for Christian women entrepreneurs to connect, build wildly profitable service-based businesses, and grow their faith. So whether you're just getting started with an idea or you already have an established brand and you want to lay the foundation for six-figure income, The Go-Getter membership is just what you need. With expert masterclasses, monthly prayer, and tons of courses and downloads, your business will be better because of it. Entrepreneurship isn't easy, but this community will help you go from feeling stuck to clear and motivated. Join today at gogettermembership.com and save 50% off your first three months when you use code podcast at checkout. We'll see you inside. And so one of the things that I love is that you are making that decision to pivot or to launch out into um, educating other people in your industry. And so talk to us about like your decision to transition into saying, you know, I've learned and I've mastered this for myself, but now I want to help other people. Tell us about that transition And what made you feel comfortable calling yourself an expert in the space and industry that you're in? Well, I'm just going to say I still feel a little nervous from time to time. I don't want to call it imposter syndrome. I think I'm just growing as it's growing. But um, going back to the pandemic, it was pivotal for me. So um, that was my time to really just sit and 
One of the things that I came across was a notebook from 2016 when I was in nail school, and it talked about my five-year goals. Now, mind you, this is about four years out, and one of the goals was to become a nail instructor. So in the midst of everything going on, I enrolled into a master educator program. But, <laughs> but, 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 shortly after that, uh, my daughter made her arrival, so everything kind of shifted for me. I shut down my business for a whole year just so that I could focus on being a mommy and I could focus on trying to figure out how to grow online because I didn't want to be stuck at the nail table when I have this little person running around. She's growing by the day. It's really important to me that I'm present for her. And the pull between those two things is what kind of forced (laughs) me into standing into the fact that I am an expert in, in the nail care industry. Like, a lot of people didn't survive the pandemic because we had to shut down. We were like in the state of Illinois, it was necessary that you close. You could not come into close contact with people for like months. Most, I'm not going to say most, many beauty businesses run client by client. It's the same way nine to fivers are like paycheck to paycheck. A lot of beauty businesses run client by client. So a sick day or a shutdown Like that could take someone out. And I just didn't want to be put in another situation where if something major happened or even if I just wanted to take time off, I wanted to do things differently. I wanted to be able to still be able to survive in business. And it only made sense that now I'm like, let me stop being scared. Let me stop running away from the fact that I I really can teach a little bit. (laughs) So um, the Polish and Proverbs community was birthed. I've officially been walking in it this year, y'all. Oh, but yes, it was a long time coming. And it's really just one of those dreams that I had from my initial vision in joining the nail industry is really to help others and to make sure They understand these different nuances of running a beauty business that you wouldn't necessarily get in school. And then mentors are they they can be a little scarce. So it's that of offering a space where now you can come in, you can learn, you can grow and then maybe you can go teach somebody else as well. Yeah, one of the things I love about it is that it's really for people who are in the beauty industry, but also want to incorporate faith. So talk to us about that, you know, incorporating the faith piece and like what made you feel more comfortable doing that and like why you felt it was necessary to add the element of faith in the beauty industry when it's like, you know, most people go to the beauty industry and you're going to hear R&B slow jams in the background, not, you know, worship music. So I would love to hear just your, your thoughts on like why you thought it was important to incorporate faith in in what you're doing in your teaching other beauty entrepreneurs? So it comes down to really how faith is growing in my own life. It became where I couldn't still walk in the two separate worlds at the same time. And if if it matters to me, the music that I'm playing in my nail salon, whereas I'm no longer playing the neo soul and the R&B, it's straight Afro gospel in, in here day in and day out. It's the same thing if I'm going to educate people. I'm showing up online. I can't hide my faith. I can't not speak and and glorify God. Like I'm like, it's really him because I would be just, honestly, I would have ran away from the nail industry if it wasn't for him steady bringing me back in. So yeah, I, I specifically wanted beauty pros who pray in the name of Jesus, because if not, we, we can't, we talking about two different things. We talking about two different things. Yeah. So it it became non-negotiable for me to stop kind of hiding behind the fact that I am a Christian and that in itself gives way to boldness. So um, talking about my faith is is definitely non-negotiable and I cannot cower it down for those who either want to mingle, mix and mingle other things or those who are like, well, that's not it, but I can still learn from you. You're going to be uncomfortable. Because I'm not going to not talk about Jesus. I'm not going to not teach what I'm learning in the word of God and how it applies to how we then interact with people, not only in our businesses, but at the grocery store where you could also be meeting a potential client or at the airport where it's like you don't know who you're coming into contact with. I'm talking about the people who touch people 
it's not just this with the services that we offer. So it matters that your spirit is right. So we, we have to get that together and also figure out what God said about how we should run these beauty businesses. So, so good. And I love the, what you brought up about, like you can meet a potential client anywhere. One of our long-term clients, I met her at a dance studio, like going to like a dance class for fun on the weekends. And it, you know, there's a much longer story to that, but it was a good, good time. Okay. We was, and this was probably back in like 2017. And then she just kind of stayed in contact and eventually became a client, watched my journey and things like that. And so you never know who you're going to meet and how representing like yourself offline and online um, can really impact people in your business and the income that you're able to make. Uh, one thing that I love about you is that I know that you said, you know, when your daughter came, you took a break, but then baby, you got straight back to it. And so one thing I really admire is that you have been able to, you know, manage so many different things. So you went from, you know, being single and free and all of that to now being a mom and like managing a business and like doing all these different things. And one of the things like, you know, and and not only are you doing the work where you have to be present with people, but then you're launching out and doing more work in the marketplace ministry sector, but then you're also managing house and home and a child. And so talk to us about like, like what advice do you have for women who, you know, are moms and have want to navigate that space of like, you know, still being present in their business, but also being present for their families? Yeah. So great question. I think everything comes down to number one, working from a place of rest. Number two, always revisiting your vision. And then number three, having rhythms and routines that match the lifestyle that you want to have. In the Polish and Proverbs community, we are, we look at the Proverbs 31 woman and how she manages these things. Her life is full of rhythms and routines that anyone can pull from to basically figure out, okay, this is how I run a household, but this is also how I run a business. This is how I run my life without letting my life run me. And key to all of that is though working from a place of rest. If you are just working, 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 you will run yourself into the ground. And that's burnout is never cute. It's never cute. And it, it not only can you see it coming most times, but it could have been avoided if you would just work from a place of rest. So I definitely recommend that. And then just also, yeah, being very clear on your why and revisiting it, having it posted, being able to see it. I, I see my why when I walk into my salon suite, like it's different things like that. Like just being able to like operate off of those three things would be so helpful. Yeah. It's so funny because the first thing that I wrote down on my piece of paper, on my notes, when it was time to think about what I wanted to ask you later was I wrote down the word rest because I heard you talking about like, oh, there was a time when I was working sometimes seven days a week. And you were like, I would not recommend that to anybody. Like, I don't recommend that, right? Zero out of 10, do not recommend, right? But I, and it's so crazy because I had a plan of like, after asking you the question about time management, I was going to ask you about rest. So I, the fact that you was like working from a place of rest, I'm like, girl, you on, on one with this, okay? So what I want you to elaborate on is like, what does it mean to work from a place of rest? Like, what does that even mean? And like, how does that show up in your life? Yeah. So again, three things is spending time with God, spending time with yourself, and then spending time with quality community. When you spend time with God, the time that you spend with yourself and the time that you spend with community, it's going to be blessed. But the key is to really spend that time with God. So also how I talked about those rhythms and routines. Yeah starting your day or having some dedicated time in the day where this is like, it's just me and you God. I'm going to read the word or I'm going to praise. I'm going to worship doing something to like, just kind of nurture that relationship and then nurturing a relationship with yourself. I don't work on Wednesdays. I don't, I have gotten to a place where I'm now like, you can't convince me. You can't a Wednesday and a Sunday. You can't convince me to work on a Wednesday or a Sunday because I have dedicated that time to myself, my family, just it's, it's non-negotiable. So the time with self making that non-negotiable because we can easily put ourselves on the back burner, but also time with community, like in this industry, 
your calendar can easily run you if you don't run your calendar. I don't let people book more than like three, four weeks out because I'm like, well, what if one of my friends is like, hey, like I'm hosting a dinner Friday night at like 6 p.m. Friday night at 6 p.m. I would normally possibly be with a client, but because I'm taking control of my calendar and I'm prioritizing the fact that I need to spend time with the people that I love, that love me, they're not just here for a service. It's not just a transactional relationship. Then prioritizing that, yeah. So it, it's being clear on like the non-negotiables, but definitely making time for God, yourself, and your community. That is so good. Like working from a place of rest. And I cannot like push that more. Like I have learned that I cannot work every single day. And I literally have gotten to a place probably for the past like five or six years that I don't work on uh, Sundays at all. Like I don't touch because I used to be sending emails, like trying to get ready for the week. And no, all of that, honestly, it's dishonoring to God. And I know that like nobody wants to hear that because we all think that it's nothing to just send an email but it's, it, it's like, if God is telling us to rest, why aren't we resting? Like if God it told us to not use our brain or our physical energy to do anything on a Sunday, like why are we doing that, right? And so I made a decision to like really honor the Sabbath. And like, after I made a decision to do that, my business really shifted. Like, and I probably, I'm trying to think what year I actually implemented it. It probably was maybe in like 2019 like before a little bit before the pandemic and then definitely during the pandemic I honored it as well um and then I don't work on Fridays like so I'm not on a Friday like the only thing that you might catch me doing is a podcast episode that's it but on Fridays I'm like yeah that's my time for me and my friends that's my time for me to just sit down because y'all know like I've been on tour okay your girl been on tour going any and everywhere Sometimes I just need to sit down <laughs> and look at a wall, <laughs> just relax. And I think that sometimes we have normalized moving around so much and doing that we miss out on the opportunity to just sit and relax and like not have anything on the agenda. And so I'm looking at this right here, be still and know I'm God. But like sometimes stillness is the thing that will get you unstuck. I think a lot of people be like, I'm so stuck. I don't know what to do. And it's like, girl, have you sat down in a while? Like, have you slowed down to do anything other than focus on your business or all the the many things that you could put your attention to? And so I just love that concept of working from a place of rest and just managing your calendar and your schedule in a way where you own it and it doesn't own you. So I love that so, so much. So this episode honestly has been so amazing. One of the questions I have for you is one that I ask everyone, but what would you say to the woman who is afraid of going after her next big thing? I would say surrender it to God so that it doesn't feel like you have to figure it all out. Um, I think as I talked about how God arrested me, it was that of like, he's like, okay, girl, daughter, you've been working, you've been doing all the things, but like, don't you want to hear what I have to say about that vision that I gave you? Because I can tell you how to do it. So if God is giving you vision for your next level, give it right back to him. Ask him what he wants you to do next. So good. Surrender that thing to him because baby, fear is going to be present anyways. So, you know, we just kind of got to ignore it and go down the path that he has for us. And so I know y'all want to stay connected with Alexis. So Alexis, go ahead and share with us how we can stay connected with you, where we can find you online and all that good stuff. Yes. So I am Prestines, P-R-E-S-S-T-I-N-E-S on YouTube, Instagram, and threads. I love that so much. So simple. And I'm pretty sure, Alexis, you were the first person. I think I may not. I'm pretty sure. I tried press-ons for the first time because of you. Like, I, I'm pretty sure. So she be making press-ons, all the things. Wait, do you still do press-ons? I'm up I here do. promoting. Actually, okay, when we were at the retreat, you advised me to change my packaging. So I don't know if you see, this yes. is literally what you suggested I did. 
Yeah. You suggested this. So thank you, Candice, because yeah. So beautiful. Like as well. <laughs> That's why I'm so excited. So if y'all are just listening to this podcast episode instead of watching it on YouTube, you need to go watch it on YouTube just so you can see the beautiful packaging. But like that is the fruit of obedience, not just on my end, but also on her end, right? So like I'm obedient to God, doing what God told me to do, hosting retreats, sharing wisdom with other people. And then like, because a lot of times what happens is, you know, I've worked with hundreds of women. Like I've worked with so many women over the years, but they don't always do what I tell them to do. Right. And so it's, you know, and it's not just because, oh, you know, they listened to me and, you know, they didn't think that my advice was good enough. But a lot of times it's because they didn't believe in themselves enough to do the work. And one thing I love about you is that you are like, no, like Candace told me to do something. I'm about to go do it. So to see the fruit of you being obedient to the gift that God gave you, God gave you the gift and you are like taking it seriously enough to invest in yourself, go to events, go to trade shows, go to all these things. But then you're like, okay, I heard them say it. Let me actually do it. Right. So you have this beautiful packaging. I remember the packaging before was like a nail file type thing where it was like, uh, a sticky thing attached to the nails. And I was like, I think you should change this. And like the fact that you actually implemented it, I think that's such, that speaks volumes about the type of entrepreneur that you are because just some, sometimes people just take it and they just don't do anything with it. And just exactly what you said earlier is that what is in your hands is enough. Whatever God gives you in your hands, it is enough. And so thank you for honoring that. And thank you for showing me that. So Thank you, Alexis. This episode has been absolutely incredible. Y'all make sure that you guys support Alexis. Y'all, man, I love, love, love these episodes where we get to talk to real women about their stories, their journeys, and just where God has brought them and the successes that they have had over the years. I'm honored. And that was such an incredible way to end the episode is just to see the fruit of what happens uh, when you are paying attention to the wisdom that you get um, from others, but also implementing it. I'll end on this last note is I was just recently in um, Los Angeles for the Profit Push Tour. And when I say that, man, it was such an incredible time. But one of the young ladies in there, she asked a really great question. And she said, when do you decide? Because she was like, okay, I'm already enrolled in certain programs, but I feel like I need more. And I'm going into debt to like, you know, get myself into these different programs. Like, should I, when, should I continue to go into debt or should I, you know, what should I do? Or should I, you know, should I take the leap of faith, take on the debt and like enroll in the program? And one of the things was something that, you know, probably the average business owner won't tell you. Like, Everybody isn't going to tell you, like most people will probably say, yeah, go into debt to be in my program. I'm the person that I'm like, well, if you've already invested in something and you haven't gotten the fullness of it from it, like if you haven't gone through and literally, you know, taken notes on every single thing and implement it on every single thing that you've learned, then that might be why you haven't seen the return on your investment yet, right? So if you are in a coaching program and you have coaching sessions with, you know, a particular person and they told you to do something in particular and you go back and you realize like, well, I haven't done that yet. And then why enroll in somebody's new program if you still haven't done or implemented the advice that you were given in another program or in another course? And so one of the things that I ended up pointing to is one of our clients in EOLA who not only built a multiple, she built a six figure side hustle, but one of the things that she said, she was like, Candace, you know, thank you so much. I took the go-getter membership so serious, so serious that I went through every single module that related to me. And she was like, I did this course that was around making money with, through events. This girl literally made $7,500 from hosting her first event. She made $5,000 profit from that event. And she sold her program and turned the recording of it into a digital product. Like she was able to do all of that because she implemented based off of what was already in her hand. So I tell y'all that to say, if you're the person that be buying up all these courses, that you're even in our membership or somebody else's membership, and you haven't gone 
into it to really take full advantage, like go into it, take full advantage and implement and do the work because the money that you might be looking for or the results that you might be looking for are probably in that program and they're just waiting on you to do the implementation. All right. So I hope you have an amazing, amazing and incredible rest of your day. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode just as much as I did. As always, we will, we are praying for you and we will see you on the next episode of the Go-Getter Podcast. See ya! Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Go-Getter Podcast. If you love this conversation, you're gonna love the panels and workshops that are at Go-Getter Conference. It's our premier event of the year and it happens annually. It's going to help you market and monetize your God-given ideas and connect with women from across the globe. Head over to gogetterconference.com to check it out right now. And just for staying until the end of this episode, we have a special gift for you. The Go-Getter Plan and Profit Workbook. This workbook is going to help you plan your income for the year. So head to gogetterpodcast.com forward slash plan and profit to get your copy. And don't forget to drop a five-star review if you enjoyed this episode. We'll see you on the next episode of the Go-Getter Podcast.